Hi. In this How-To Stats video, I'm going to answer the question, what is the average stock market return? And what's inspired me to put this presentation together is that usually when I tell somebody who doesn't have much experience what the average stock market return is, they're usually surprised that it's so high and they feel inspired that they should put money into the stock market. But really, if they were informed, they should also be asking me the question, what is the standard deviation associated with the average stock market return? And I'm going to answer that question as well in this presentation. So I looked at a couple of indices. One is the S&P 500, which is the US-based uh, index. And I also looked at the Australian index, and I'll show that second. So S&P 500, I looked at the accumulation index, which includes stock price movements as well as dividends. So that's really your total return from the stock market. You need to include both. And I've got annual data from 1965 to 2013, and I got those data from Berkshire Hathaway's letter to investors on the very first page of his letter. He has all the investment returns uh, for each year from 1965 to 2013, at least uh, up, to this, up to this date. So what are the results? Here are the basic statistics. So for those 49 years uh, of results, the mean is 11 0.32. So the average mean stock market return on the S&P 500 is 11.32, but the median is actually 14.60, which uh, is higher than 11, and it suggests that the d distribution is skewed negatively, and I'll get to that in a minute. But here's that really other important piece of information that people should be wondering about, and that's the standard deviation associated with the performance. And you can see the standard deviation is 17.49 which is appreciably larger than the mean and usually when uh, the standard deviation is bigger than the mean you're dealing with something fairly insane and that's how uh, some people would describe the stock market and here are the here's the distribution of stock market returns uh, on an annual basis and you can see that it ranges from a negative something close to negative 40 percent and as high as 40 percent and you can see this whole section here is associated with negative returns. So this is just uh, an annual return. And it comes out that 21% of years you get a negative return from the stock market, S&P 500, based on these data. So I thought, what if I got a rolling moving average uh, to help smooth out these variabilities from year to year? Because you often hear financial uh, advisors uh, suggesting that your investment horizon on the stock market should be five years. And I thought, well, let's see if that's actually uh, gives you a more stable return. And of course it does. And uh, you can see the distribution here. Uh, and what's important, I think, is that still there are 5% of five-year rolling periods that yield a negative return. It's not a big negative return, so it's just somewhere between 0 and negative 5%. And if you look just above that, you get uh, a large number of years that are somewhere between 0 and 2.5%, so very negligible returns even on a five-year rolling basis. And in my opinion, the idea that you are going to get somewhere around the average return from the stock market, which is somewhere around 11-12%, on a, if you invest your money for five years, that's not true. I mean, in terms of percentages, there's still going to be a decent chance that you're not going to get that. If anything, the investment horizon should probably be closer to 10 years. So I looked at the S&P 200 as well, which is the Australian Stock Market Index, and looked at the Accumulation Index, which uh, of course includes stock price increase plus dividends. I only had data from the year 2000 to 2013. And I got this from the Australian Foundation Investment Company Annual Reports. They report the accumulation index uh, result. And you end up getting, based on 2000 to today, or 2013, the average stock market return is 8.96. But the median is, again, much larger, 12.40, which is much closer to what you get on the S&P 500. And here again, that crazy huge standard deviation of 15.71 and negative skewness suggesting a non-normally distributed uh, distribution, which is true. And this is what the distribution looks like. And 36% of years 
uh, are associated with a negative return. Uh, I didn't do a rolling five-year basis because I only had data from 2000 to 2013. But I think something worth pointing out just as a, a final point is that uh, the Australian Foundation Investment Company in their 1999 report mentions that the All Ordinaries Accumulation Index, which is the Aussie index, had an average performance of 15.4%. So I think when you combine that with the years 2000 to 2013, you're somewhere in the ballpark of 12 to 12%, 13% if you would average that out, particularly if you look at the median. Uh, so both the S&P 500 and the S&P 200 the ASX S&P 200 give you a return of somewhere, I would say, about 12%. Uh, but if you want to get that 12%, uh, you, I think you have to invest more than five years, probably have to invest closer to 10. Uh, and of course, uh, past performance is not necessarily an indicator of future performance. So who knows what the future is going to hold. But based on the past, these are the results. So thanks for listening, listening and I'll catch you next time.